Lasers. They seem to be practically everywhere. They're used in surgery, they're used for cat toys, they're used to distract airplanes, and now they're used for printing. Now, while you may have heard of laser jet printers, we now have something even more amazing. It still connects to the computer, it still produces pictures, but now we're not printing on paper, we can now print on virtually anything. And the only limit is your creativity and a few other things. Today, we're gonna to be taking a look at the newest model from a taser, the L2, specifically the L2 36 watt. Now this machine boasts some pretty spectacular features such as a 3000 degree Celsius laser head and it can cut 30 millimeters of wood in one pass. That cuts down your time dramatically. But why on earth would you wanna cut wood what would you even use a laser engraver for? Today we're going to be taking a look at several different projects that actually utilize this type of machine. And if you're still not convinced, look around you. Chances are pretty good that there are local laser clubs that you can join. And you can talk to the guys and the girls there and figure out if this type of product is something up your alley. I definitely would encourage you guys to take a look at the Ataser. They are cutting edge as far as technology goes. They are one of the top companies out there. And honestly, I have no complaints whatsoever about this particular machine. But what makes this so spectacular? Let's go take a look. Oh, hey, I got a delivery. <gasps> Yay, it's my taser laser. Awesome. So excited! I'm so excited to open this up. Actually, I already knew it was here in my deck. But it's a little hard to shoot video. I'm being excited to open this while I'm also carrying peanut butter bagel and coffee. It is coffee time right now, so I'm gonna drink my coffee and open this because I cannot wait to open this. I am so excited to see what is inside this. Don't drop it. Okay. So we have this. Put this mat under the object to prevent damage to the tabletop. All right. Ooh, this one is kind of like a, a plum purple color. Now let's get this put together. Like other Ataser models, the L2 comes with a very detailed instruction manual. Everything is carefully packaged, so if your shipper decides to dropkick your package and route, don't worry, it will still be in fabulous condition. The step-by-step -step instructions include great photos and numbered hardware bags, so it makes assembly quite easy. My only complaint here was that one of the bags was labeled extras and included some set screws that you needed to assemble this rod right here. They were actually supposed to be already on the machine, but because this product is so new, likely they hadn't been added yet. So do know that the screws you need for this part are in the bag labeled extras. And put those on before you put this whole thing together. Also be aware that that bar is covered in plastic, which is very difficult to remove and leaves the bar slightly sticky. These are the set screws right in here. And the stickiness makes it hard to slide in, but you need the stickiness on there to add extra grip. So just be aware. Now this one is more involved than earlier models. As far as assembly goes, there are a lot more components and it is a more advanced machine. But the L2 is definitely worth the extra effort involved. Now it does offer a removable head, which is easy to take on and off and allows you to clean it or make repairs as needed, which is much appreciated. The other interesting thing about this particular model over the other models is there's only one power cord, which connects directly into the unit. And from there, it will connect over to your power assist, which is fully automatic. This one offers a larger LCD screen there is a USB port on the top along with an SD card option so you don't have to have it connected to your computer, which is pretty handy if you don't want to run cords. Now you do need to use a USB type C cord to connect to your computer and they do offer one. However, if your computer is a little farther away, you'll probably want to order something a little bit longer. The one thing that I noticed that I absolutely loved was the intuitive design. 
everything was so nicely tucked out of the way it was all meticulously designed so you didn't have to worry about where your cords were running in the earlier models cords were everywhere as with many other brands but this one is sleek and smooth and very well thought out definitely worth the extra price point and you can see my honey comb grid underneath there ready to go the other thing is this one does not offer a safety shut off so do be aware that there is no emergency shut off on this one all right now that we have the laser set up we have to finish getting everything set up in the program and then all you have to do if you want to autofocus your work is just put the laser directly over the item that you plan to engrave or cut through and then click the autofocus button right there. It will take care of all the guessing work. It'll level it up or down exactly as it needs to be. Since we have our very first test project right here, so we can see our target is right there. So we're gonna see if this will actually focus in on that. I'm gonna go ahead and click autofocus and you guys will get to see what actually happens. That took a while, I was surprised. So let's see, and it'll always tell us what the system says about what it did. So right here we can see starting stream, stream completed. Okay, okay, starting stream, autofocus in progress, stream completed, 17 seconds. Even though it's taking 17 seconds, which I feel is a little bit long, it's still autofocusing it. Do not skip any of the steps in the manual, especially the calibration steps. All right, so I have my first design picked out. It says Farm Girl Designs. Oh yeah, I realize I totally mistyped designs. It's supposed to be D-E-S-I-G-N-S. Anyway, um, it gives you a lot of options as far as text goes. You can change the font, you can do bold, you can do italic, you can even change the the height, the width, and the spread of it. So it has a lot of interesting features that kind of help you line it up with your materials. Now, while the ruler measurements on the sides of the program can give you an idea of how tall your shapes and sizes are, it doesn't exactly correlate to what's on your laser bed. Because the laser is always offset, it will not print at zero, zero exactly. So you cannot use it necessarily for coordinates um, but it does come in handy for measuring your objects very quickly. And then the biggest drawback to using any sort of laser is just trying to get your work in the right position. It does take some trial and error, but once you get a good system down, you should be good to go. Um, I'll also put a link in the description for one of these too, um, just in case you feel like getting one. Um, so right here I have my chunk of wood lined up on zero, zero. And then if we look at our wood, it comes all the way just slightly past 280. So we know that our x-axis, we are perfect. The kicker is, I don't know exactly where, how far off one side or the other to put the honeycomb. So we want to make sure that we have this on here correct. So we're going to go to move. We want to go home. So it's going up and down, but we want it to travel side by side. There it goes. Um, right here, we actually have a switch. You see that little bar right there? So this is as far as it can come. Obviously, we don't want it to crash into this either. Your first couple tries are going to be a little bit of trial and error to figure out the schematics of how the machine actually works. Now, originally, I had planned to walk you through step by step exactly what I was doing to create each project. Unfortunately, that would make for a very, very long video, and I'd kind of rather just show you what I've been trying to make instead. So uh, with that said, I will also link the Lightburn tutorial page. The Lightburn program offers excellent tutorials to get you started and really give you a ground base for moving on to other projects. So let's just show you exactly what we made and what I would have changed.
Maybe just a tiny bit on this side. Woo! You can definitely smell it. I better open the window. <laughs> it's also why I stuck it right next to this window here. Oh hey, look at it. You can see some stuff coming out. Wow. And we can see our cords are running pretty good over here. That's always a concern is that the cords are going to get caught. I don't think so, but it's pretty cool. Interesting. All right, so it's done. Um, It looks like it burned a good way through the wood. I'm not exactly sure how deep, but it burned through pretty good. Look at this. It's gonna come out here because it's less smoky and you can see in the sunlight. So you do see a little bit of that wetness towards the bottom. That's because I actually have an oil and stain on this. It's a combination water and oil based. So I'm not really surprised that that's um, being affected by the laser heat. I don't know that normally you would be using something that's already stained, but this is just part of my ceiling board that I had. So I figured I would give it a shot. So this is a great material to just kind of kick around with and see what it can do with settings. So we can see that it's got some little ridges down in there. And again, this is a, uh, yeah, this is pine, which probably isn't ideal to use for this. Um, that's why they usually like what they call it balsa wood. So if you wanted to go all the way through, you could probably do 100% power. So we also have a nice selection of other wood pieces here as well. We have our two metal pieces that we're gonna look at doing. Again, I recommend having sacrificial pieces of wood if you plan to etch something, if you plan to cut through something, you can play with your settings and know what it's going to take. Um, always do test run, just to be safe. Next, I decided to play around with some graphics. I decided to try to add some sort of clip art like a tractor into this picture. Pictures are a little bit different and whether you choose to go with a black and white image or a full color image will produce slightly different results. For me, I decided to go with something simple, like a general black and white image. So I just dropped it in and resized it to where I wanted it. Now the program Lightburn actually gives you several different options depending on the type of image you're going to burn. So it's just a matter of playing around with the different settings to figure out what type of burning will work for your image. And again, I would keep documented results of all of this stuff to make it faster and easier the next time. Different types of materials are going to burn slightly differently, and different types of pictures will also burn slightly differently. Alright, let's give this a shot and see what we have. So I was kind of shooting for more in the middle of this board, but again, I'm not quite yet have figured out how to get stuff lined up exactly where I need it. But you can see that this is going to burn it a lot different than the text. This is actually burned as a fill, where the text is burned as a line, usually. All right, so that was a lot faster than I expected. That was insanely fast. I really thought that I was gonna have to walk out, go in some breaths of fresh air, run back in. Anyway, pull this out and see how it cuts. Because essentially where this thing goes, that is a program issue. The laser itself, how well it can cut is the laser issue. So let's look at this, wow. So we can get the light on that. Oh, that shows up great on camera. Oh my gosh, look at that. That is fantastic. That is so cool. Oh my word. And actually, I love the texture on that. That is awesome. <sighs> well, I've got more to do. Let's go. For project number two, I decided to push the envelope a lot. And I found this cute little heart-shaped picture frame at the local grocery store. They actually had several items like this that you could buy for projects like this. First, you want to measure out your board and you want to measure out the cutout. And then you put those same dimensions into the program and then plop your picture into it. But the hardest part is getting the laser right where you want it. Some people actually make jigs to allow them to center their project um, you kind of have to get a feel for where to position it. Either position it on the corner using the crosshairs of the laser, or you can position it directly in the center of your file, which is actually pretty nice. And had I thought of that, it probably would have worked out a little bit better for this file, but nonetheless, I decided to give it a go on the corner. 
All right, for this particular one, um, there was a little bit more involved. Hopefully I have this centered on there correctly. Oh, as far as my burn settings, we're gonna click our layers. Um, it's under an image, cause that's pretty much what it's displaying as. Uh, we have our speed at 100, so that's 100 millimeters per second. You can change the settings to millimeters per minute, but I've got 100 per second. And I also dropped the power down a little bit to 80% because I don't really want to cut lines in it. I just want to kind of burn a pattern into it. Now we're going to click preview up here just to see what it's generally going to look like. So the red is where the laser head is traveling and the black is what it's cutting, or in this case, burning. So um, you can scroll in and see how fine of a detail it is. So all these little bits, see all these little lines? Those are burns from the laser. Burn, 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 burn. So there you go. And it's gonna take us about 48 minutes, roughly. Oh, total time, 56. Let's run this program and see what we get. Oh man, that is dead nuts on. It's probably cutting in a little bit more than what we really need it to be. actually have it just a little bit too much off to the side so we are actually going to push the project down just a hair all right so let's see what we have here Wow, that turned out pretty good, considering that I actually had to move it a couple of times just to make sure it was in line. But look at that. Now, if you want it to be a little bit more precise, you can bump up um, the settings a little bit more so that it's a little bit tighter. But um, if you notice, you don't see any of the burn edges, you just see the actual color. So that's really great. You can see that I, um, bumped it that way just a hair when I repositioned it and you can see that's why it's going off um, but overall it, it did a great job so the next project that we're gonna be working on is a little plaque this is gonna be for my dog room so it's gonna be a little more fun we're gonna have it for the French tins now this particular type of wood while it looks super thick it's actually thin this is one of those things that's gonna stand away from the wall just a little bit, so it works really well to do cutouts with. Now you could do engraving on this, but I think it would look really great as a cutout. So let's see what we can design. Once again, we are gonna measure the ultimate dimensions of the piece that we're gonna be working on, and then we're gonna draw a similar size square into our workspace right here. And that's gonna give us an idea of where we can position our graphics. For this particular project, we are going to be using text again. And the tricky part here is trying to get the text to go in a curve. It's going to be something like this. And lastly, I brought in three graphics to use for Frenchie heads. So I put those in, and then before we go to actually cut out the pattern, we are going to only select the text, top and bottom, and the three heads. We're not going to select the circle or the square because we're going to tell the machine to only cut the selected graphics. All right, here we go. I'm kind of nervous. Um, just to show you really quick, this is the cut settings that we're using. We're going speed 350 uh, millimeters per minute. Uh, we're on line mode and our power is at 70. Whew. All right. And our job origin is in the bottom corner, and we're starting from the current position. All right, so here we go. It's actually kind of exactly where I wanted it to, I think.
So the other reason you use the honeycomb here is to help the smoke go out from underneath it so that it doesn't catch on fire. It just helps keep the air moving around it. You can see all the smoke coming out. Oh look, you can actually see the A fell through. It's definitely pretty smoky in here, so you definitely want a fan running and some good ventilation. So this was a very straightforward, very easy project, but there were two very easy mistakes that I also made for this project. The first one was not exactly determining how thick my material was. This is only one millimeter thick. The material settings I used were for wood that was three millimeters thick. It makes a big difference, and I had more power than I actually needed for this project. I probably could have cut it faster and at a lower power. The second error that I made, as you can see, only half the graphics are actually falling through. And that is because on the back side, I had completely forgotten that there was a one inch thick border going all the way around the back. For some reason, I had been thinking it was like maybe three millimeters thick. Now you can actually get the laser to punch through material that's a little over an inch thick. However, you have to set it up for that. And this, like I said, was set up for three millimeters thick. But don't worry, I came up with a great fix for this that will make it look good as new and completely great. And you can always reuse your cutouts too for some other projects. Later, I added some stain and made it look really great. All right, so we're gonna try something a little bit different now. We are actually gonna move right over into doing some metal. I wanna make sure I have enough time to kind of work through all these different projects I kind of hit the ground running and we are going to slam it with a metal project. So with this piece we have the painted side and then we have the non-painted side. We really really want to see what sort of capability it has to cut through metal both with the effect of the finished side and the non-finished side for engraving purposes. Let's check it out. Now like I said I hit the ground running. Most styled lasers as a general rule of thumb cannot cut through metal and they cannot also etch metal. Usually you have to use a special solution just to get it to mark metal. So if this can do either of those two, we are vastly ahead of the game. So I decided to play a guess and see if I can get the settings correct to at least get one of those two things to happen. I don't know if this is steel and I don't know if it's aluminum. So again, it's another shot in the dark, but we're gonna see what we can do. With this type of machine, it's a lot of uh, playing around and seeing what happens and taking notes and trying again. Makes me nervous. All right. What do we got here? Okay, I actually touched the sheet. I forgot that this thing moves. So I think I made it mad, but... Okay, so let's put like a little divot in there. So I actually ran the pattern on this twice, and you could see how fast it was going. It did seem like it was cutting through the metal. Now, it's not all the way through by any means, but it was going very quickly. There's a good chance that if you slow down the speed enough, it may eventually just punch right through this. I believe the metal is aluminum based off my testing with magnets. It Magnets wouldn't stick to it. But this was some scrap stuff we had laying around, so I honestly couldn't tell you. But it definitely was biting into it pretty good. And I think if you did it enough times, it could eventually cut through it. And that was pretty impressive by my book. The next test we're going to jump into is color on stainless steel. Now the material I'm using is mirrored finished stainless, so you do want to scuff it because you don't want it reflecting back on the laser. A taser has a great blog post on how to do this, so I followed the directions and set up a test grid. With all of your materials, you really should do a test grid so that you can get a better idea and have fewer guesses in the dark as far as how to set up your settings. So I gave it a shot on some stainless steel. It wasn't perfect, but it was a great start. 
Well, this was kind of unexpected. I was just running this through and wow. I am excited because I actually got some color on here. You can't tell because of the light above me, but we have color. Look at that. It does need some adjusting, but we are getting there. So this is a good start. And yes, when you do get the system set up fully, you will get a full spectrum of rainbow colors from this. But you just have to make sure your settings are spot on because just the slightest difference will give you a slightly different color. So I may have jumped the gun on this just a little bit. I got excited and really wanted to print Eric a picture of his beloved car onto stainless steel. However, his car is in the famous Gold Rush yellow color, and I had not been able to get it to produce yellow just yet. So I opted to do it in blue, which was a pretty good idea, considering that I didn't even know if it could do this. Would it be able to even capture the high detailed graphics of this car? I decided to give it a shot. Well, this is what I got. And honestly, I think it's pretty dang good. Now I'm not sure how well this is going. Oh, it is showing off my camera. It's kind of hard to tell because of the reflection. So the bottom one is the first attempt I did that's in grayscale. Now you can see that's the bottom part of the bumper. Um, you can see it's, it's blue. Oh. So yes, this laser in fact will oxidize in color. So I was kind of hoping that perhaps this would oxidize into different shades of black. And we do have some black on the grill right there. Um, we're not getting quite as much black as I had hoped, but we are getting blue, which is crazy to me. Now here's the kicker. Anytime you heat up metal very hot, especially steel, it likes to bend or in this case, warp slightly. Um, some people have different techniques for getting around this, and this is honestly very thick, um, high-grade stainless steel, so I'm surprised that it did warp. But that shows you the power of the laser. This thing gets hot, hot enough to warp the steel. But I was determined to get this whole car burned into metal. So, rather than try to burn it on the stainless, which was already warping, I opted for this really hard steel. This stuff is thick and it is hard. So I went through and I spray painted it with two coats of enamel black paint, hoping that I could burn the paint off and leave a beautiful car pattern and maybe even etch a little bit into the metal. Honestly, I wasn't sure what I was doing here. Um, there's so many different options that you have with this. It's, it's hard to pick just one. So I uh, tweaked the program settings just a little bit. I definitely didn't want to stay here for I don't know, like eight hours trying to burn a very detailed car picture into this metal and have it not turn out good. So I decided to knock the graphics down a little bit using some of the options within the program, hoping that maybe it wouldn't cause the laser to fire so much and it would get done faster. All right, so this is what the car should look like, more or less. Again, this is you know rendered in the program here. And this is what we're actually getting. So this is actually not too bad. So steel, you actually have quite a few options with it. Um, you could paint it and etch the paint off, or you could etch it directly, or you can even do color on steel. Right here, I mean, look how deep this laser is actually going in there. And that hadn't necessarily been my intent. It was mostly just to see if I could get a nice uh, grayscale finish off the paint. And the brown is actually the burned little bits of paint. Um, I wasn't quite sure if it was rust, but later on I went through with a little bit of Windex and wiped it down and all of that came off. Unfortunately, I think it looked better with the brown because it really made it pop a lot more. But the cool thing with the steel is you probably could go through with an acid wash or some sort of acid and get it to oxidize back in. I decided that I wanted to go back through and do an outline around the areas that were supposed to be black to kind of make them pop off the actual black background. Unfortunately, I also moved the laser head. <laughs> So lining it back up was a little bit tricky. Definitely pay attention, make sure you know how to 
um, get your laser head back in a position and get it where you need it. Because sometimes you do need to move your laser head out of the way to look at a picture. But, oh um, man, just the detail that this laser head is able to put into this is just amazing. And here is the car with my attempt at putting a border around it. Interestingly enough, the area that it had etched previously turned out to be bright silver. Look at that. That is really neat. So if I had actually run this pattern twice, I could have really made it pop pretty good. But I moved the laser head again. <laughs> I just kept getting so excited about looking at it that I just would always move the laser head out of the way. But um, man, that, that was kind of nice to see. And it would have looked really cool if I had taken the time to uh, just run patterns twice over it. But it already took four hours just to put that line around the outside. Metal is definitely going to take a lot longer, but with the L2 uh, laser, it goes much faster than the previous Taser models. And here are a few more wood projects that I decided to do. Uh, this can actually burn fine grain pictures into wood, slate, metal, you name it, it can pretty much cut it right into it. So I took this adorable picture of our three French shins and their a uh, little puppy French gin from last year that were all sitting up on the sofa and extracted the dogs out. I used Adobe Photoshop for this part of it because I have Adobe Photoshop. And then I took the dogs, um, it converted it to grayscale and plopped it into the Lightburn program. Well, this is what I was hoping it was going to look like. This is what it looked like in the program. Um, the black and white aspect looked great on the dogs, and then the text was going to be dug in deep. And this is what I got. <laughs> I definitely did not get it centered correctly, but the detail is actually pretty good. Um, the second from the left dog is very dark, and I knew this was going to be an issue. Um, you just have to play around with your settings and figure out what works best. And this, the text burned in very deep. Um, I probably had that set a little bit too strong. You can see a little bit of the smokiness around the outside edges. I had it up a little high and this was my first attempt at the bottom when I realized that it wasn't quite on par. But um, overall, man, I was impressed. And even Eric was shocked at the quality of the picture that it produced. Oh, and hey, here's my earlier project that I went back through and gently re-glued in the letters and graphics that fell out. I like this option a lot better. I think it looks great. And honestly, having the border around the outside, it works well. A different type of laser etching technique I saw actually involved two different types. The first type um, was taking a picture such as this. Uh, people were pulling them off the internet, such as adult coloring pages, or they were using AI programs to generate unique and striking images that were one of the kind. And they'd plop it into Lightburn and they would either etch out the graphics onto an already painted canvas to eat away one layer of paint at a time, or they would etch out tape. And then they would take those etched patterns and they would spray paint over them to put that color onto the material. So here we actually have a pre-painted canvas that I went through and did with several different layers, including yellow, orange, white, black, and brown to see if we can etch off different layers. So the objective here is that we are going to very carefully and painstakingly etch off one layer of paint at a time. Now this can be done. I've seen other people do it, but it is very difficult because you have to get the settings perfect and the other thing is you have to set your image up just so 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 after painstakingly selecting each and every little bit um, this is kind of what it's going to print out as it's not perfect by any means um, if you really wanted it to be perfect your best bet is gonna be to draw it out by hand um, but just to see what this thing can do and honestly I don't even know if it's gonna burn the correct areas all right, so we knock our settings down to a lot. Uh, we speeded up the laser head so it's at 12,000 millimeters per minute, and we pretty much knocked the power down to about 10% and increased it up by 1% for each color. Um, I'm not sure if that's gonna be effective or not, but we will give it a try and see what we get. You can see it's already taken the black off. 
so um, it will be knocking coloring down, but I'm not sure exactly how much. Hopefully we'll be able to get something done and hopefully we'll get some semblance of a lion. Okay, well, it definitely wasn't what I was aiming for, but you can definitely see how this is able to pull it off. I mean, it burned through one of the top layers, um, left other layers. Honestly, I can't remember which layer is the top layer anymore. But look at it. Look at how good the detail is. I mean, there's a lot of potential right here. It's going to take a lot of playing around to get your settings right and to make sure you have the correct area selected. But wow, this could really be a very cool project just for something as simple as painting a canvas with several layers of paint. <sighs> Thanks for watching, guys. I hope this was a nice introductory video on the Antaser. There are so many things that you can do with this laser. It was really hard to just narrow it down to a couple of things. I apologize about the length of the video, but wow, there's just so much you can do. And I get so excited thinking about the different projects that I want to try out. Definitely, if you're going to go with one of these lasers, you can either go with one of their um, introductory models, the P10, or you can go all the way up to the L2 36 watts. Um, there's no reason to pick one over the other. Uh, the P10 is just going to be a much slower machine with less bells and whistles. Personally, I would prefer to go with the L36 simply because it takes a lot of the stress out of some of the setup. So with that said, um, if you guys have a laser, comment down below what you like to make. And if you don't have a laser, comment what you would do with a laser. And definitely be sure to check out their Facebook group. They have a Facebook group where the more you interact with the different posts, the more you can earn points and badges, which you then can redeem in certain contests where you might be able to win a gift certificate for one of these amazing machines. They also have several sales going on on their website where you can bundle not just the laser, but some of their cool additional features as well. So definitely check it out. There are links in the video description and in the comments. Thanks so much, guys. I hope you've been having an amazing summer. I hope you guys are staying safe and healthy. <sighs> and I apologize at the lack of videos. It has just been one of those summers, I swear. It's like if 10 things can go wrong, 20 things go wrong. So um, thank you for your patience. We are working to get stuff out. Until then, just say a prayer that I can get it done quickly. Thank you so much, guys. Love you. Take care. Bye.